This is Math 142. We're going to do section 6.5 right now, uh, which is the law of signs. And uh, in this section, and both the, and the next section, we're going to start um, trying to figure out how to deal with triangles when we don't have a 90 degree angle in them. And how can we use our trig functions to help us get there? So if I look at this triangle right here, uh, this is a 60 degrees, 40 degrees, that adds to 100. That means this has to be 80 degrees. Um, and I want to find this missing side right here, this side, this C side. And I notice that I can't just set up a sine or a cosine or a tangent because I don't have a right angle. I don't have a 90 degree angle. And those relationships, for example, sine, when I say sine of some angle is, is opposite over hypotenuse, I mean when I have a right angle involved, right? That's the only way I can get a hypotenuse. So I'm going to solve this. I'm going to have to, I'm going to try and use sine to do it, but I'm going to have to create a little bit. So I've got this 60 degrees here, got this 40 degrees here. And I think that what I'll do is I'll just drop this altitude, this height straight down. And notice if I, if I do that, now I have some height. And what I've done is I've made a right triangle. I've made a right triangle here, and I made another right triangle here. So that is actually pretty clever. Let me just call this C so I can I can work to find it. So I know a, a couple of things. So if I if I were to take sine of 40 degrees, and I'm, I'm just looking at just this triangle right here now, this right triangle. It's a 90 degree angle. So if I go sine of 40 degrees that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse or that height that i drew over 35. and similarly if i were to go sine of 60 degrees over here i have this right triangle so that would be opposite over hypotenuse that would be h over c this value that i'm trying to find this c now what i could do here is i could do some work figure out what h is right multiply both sides by 35. So 35 times sine of 40 degrees is H. I can figure out what H is, and then I can plug it into here and figure out what C is. Because, you know, if I multiply both sides by C here, I have C times sine of 60 degrees is also equal to H. Um, so I could do that. I could solve this for H. Plug that value in here, solve it for C. Or, since these are both equal to H, why don't I save myself a step and just say they must be equal to each other? In other words, if this is equal to H and this is equal to H, then this must be equal to that. Right? H just kind of holds them both. I don't really actually figure out H's value. So then, uh, from here, if I want to know what C is, I could divide both sides by 60 degrees. Let me throw that in my calculator and see what I get. So as I use my calculator, let me make sure that I'm in degrees, because that's what my problem was in. So mode, nope, I was in radians. So I need to just get really used to making sure that my calculator is in the right, right format for me, the right settings. And I had uh, 35 times sine of 40 degrees. And I'm going to close that off and then divide by sine of 60 degrees. And I notice that I get about 25.98. So C is not equal to, but it's about equal to 25.98. So that must be about how long this is. And if I wanted to solve the rest of the triangle, you know, I know that these add to 180, so that would have to be uh, 80 degrees. And I could do, could do it again over here. It's a bit of work. Let me do another example like this. How about if I had something like, ooh, this is eight. I wanna know this value right here. This is 35 degrees and this is 15 degrees. And so it looks like I'm looking for side A. So I could just basically do the same steps again. And notice I'm, I'm not trying to draw it to scale. Like I'm not trying to make that an actual 15 degrees or this an actual 35 degrees. I'm just having this for some placeholders. So if I drop this height, this H, I get 
these 90 degrees. So I get this right triangle and this right triangle. It's just like this. So I know that that sine of 35 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, h over 8. I know that sine of 15 degrees, h over a, what I'm trying to find. And notice, like, the setup's exactly the same. I'm kind of doing the same steps, but just with different with different number. Uh, let me keep going from here. Uh, solve for h, multiply both sides by 8. Sim, sine of 35 degrees. Multiply both sides by a. a times sine of 15 degrees is h. These are both equal to h, so they must be equal to each other. 8 times sine of 35 degrees equals a times sine of 15 degrees. Again, I get a really similar result. I'm kind of doing the same problem. Uh, I want to know what a is, so divide both sides by sine of 15 degrees. That's just a number. You can divide by it. 8 sine of 35 degrees divided by sine of 15 degrees. Grab my calculator. I know I'm in degrees already. 8 times sine of 35 degrees divided by sine of 15 degrees. Looks like I get about 17.73. So this would be about 17.73. And I have a nice little, you know, the bigger angle is opposite the longer side. That's, a, that's kind of a good rule of thumb. That doesn't guarantee that you're right, but at least it shows that you're not wrong. So here's what I want you to notice. We're doing the same steps. There's some relationship here that um, that actually might help simplify this process for us. One of the things I, I notice in math is if I'm always doing the same thing, I should be able to automate it somehow. Like there, there should be some sort of maybe shortcut or some relationship that, that's a little bit deeper. So let's let's set this up a little bit. So I have A and B, and then I have these sides opposite them, B and A. And I know that if that's angle C, that's side C. And what I was doing, I was, I've been dropping this hypotenuse H. And then I've been saying stuff like sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And notice my H here stands for the height. It doesn't stand for hypotenuse. Um, and then I've solved both of these for H. So multiply B. So B times sine A is equal to A times sine B because they're both equal to H. Right? Notice I got 8 times sine of 35 is equal to A times sine of 15. Or C times sine of 60 is equal to 35 times sine 40. And that looks like that will always happen. And I could even manipulate this just a little bit more to make it, uh, I guess, a little, I don't know, friendlier, a little more useful to me. Um, notice if I divide both sides by B here, over here these Bs cancel out. And if I div divide both sides by A here, over here these As cancel out. And I end up with sine of angle A divided by side A is equal to sine of angle B divided by side B. Now that's interesting. That means that like if I go sine of this angle and then divide by the length that's opposite it, I get this, this ratio that's constant for the triangle. Like if I go sine of this angle and divide it by the side that's opposite it, it's going to be the same ratio as if I did it with that. And actually this holds for this too. If, if I could twist this triangle, do it one more time, and I could show that sine of angle C divided by angle C is the same value. Now with, this is within us a triangle. So this doesn't mean if I had a, a triangle that was a totally different shape, I would get the same ratio from triangle to triangle. But within the triangle, this always works. This is the law of sines. Uh, the law of sines is, is about the relationship between um, a side and its opposite angle. I, I'm sorry, an angle and its opposite side. I guess that's the same thing. So A, B, C. Law of signs tells us if we take any angle 
divide by the side that's opposite it, we'll always get the same value within any within that triangle. And that A is so gross, sorry about that. And notice that the, the reciprocal is true too. If I take the side length and divide by the sine of the angle opposite, that'll be a, a constant within a triangle. So that means all that work that we did here, it, it worked and it led us somewhere, but I could have set it up a little in a little different way. So if I was trying to find this value right here, I could just basically say that um, A over sine 35 is equal to 8 over sine 15. All right, these opposites. And then if I multiply both sides by a sine of 35 degrees, that's just a number, just multiply by it. A equals 8 times sine of 35 degrees divided by sine of 15 degrees, which is where we got to there, without having to drop the altitude and do all this, relate everything to H stuff. So let's do a little work with law of sines. And law of sines, it's a good tool, but it also... Um, it has some some treachery in it, and I'll I'll talk about what that means in just a minute. So let's use law of sines. Um, so I'm gonna draw some triangle. I'm not gonna try and draw it to scale. This is 100 degrees. Let's say this is just two degrees. Um, I know that this side is three long, and I want to know how long that side is. And how about I just call this uh, side A for now, just so I have that. And notation. So if I want to solve this, I can set it up using law of sines. And what I like to do is I like to pick the one that's going to give me my unknown in the in the numerator in the top of the fraction, just because that's going to be less work for me algebraically. So I know that this side divided by sine of the angle that's opposite it will be equal to this side divided by sine of the angle that's opposite it. Great. Uh, so sine 100 degrees, that's just a number. Sine 2 degrees, that's just a number. So if I want to get A all alone, I can multiply both sides by sine of 100 degrees. So I have A equals, and think of that as over 1. So it's 3 times sine of 100 degrees divided by sine of 2 degrees. So let me do that on my calculator. Uh, 3 times sine of 100 degrees. Make sure you close off the parentheses here. Divided by sine of 2 degrees. I know I'm still in degrees. And I get 84.66. Great. So A would about be about 84.66. That's not degrees, that's a length. And, you know, that makes sense to me. 100 degrees is a big, big angle compared to 2 degrees. So this side should be significantly larger. Than that side. And here's another one. Now on this one, um, let's solve the triangle. And when I'm solving the triangle, um, I'm going to find all the missing angles and all the missing sides. And so first thing, I think that this angle B is kind of uh, low-hanging fruit. It looks pretty easy to get at. Um, I know that the angle should add to 180 degrees. So if I go 180 minus 20 minus 25, um, that is 40, 45, 135 degrees. So angle B is 135 degrees. Great. So now let's get at the other ones. So I know I know this relationship right here, um, 80.4 divided by sine of 25. That'll give me a definite number. So how about I use that to figure out what angle, uh, what side A is? That would be A over sine of 20 degrees. So if I want to know A, multiply both sides by sine of 20 degrees, 80.4 times sine 20 over sine 25 
multiplied by sine of 20 degrees, it's going to get divided by sine of 25 degrees. Looks like about 65.07. So that was side A. And if I go to find uh, side B, I can start with that same piece. I know that 80.4 divided by sine of 25 degrees should be the same as B divided by sine of 135 degrees. Same sort of steps, multiplied by sine 135, B is going to be 80.4 times sine of 135 degrees divided by sine of 25 degrees. Notice it's a lot like this, it's just sine of 135 instead of sine 20. So if I go over to my calculator, I can actually bring up the last thing I typed in and just change this to a 135. 1, 3, and I'll insert a 5. Looks like about 134.52. And um, again, this is not evidence that it's correct, but it's pretty good proof. The longest side is opposite the biggest angle. Shortest side is opposite the shortest angle. Um, at least I'm not proven wrong. Do another example after I erase. So let's go ahead and work to solve this triangle and I'm going to kind of think about the pieces that I that I know here. I see that uh, I have this side length and then the angle that's opposite it. And I know that I have this side length. And I could try and find the opposite, the angle that's opposite it. Now, um, like I said, I like to sign, I like to set it up so that my unknown is, is on top. So I'm going to say sine B divided by the side that's opposite it is equivalent to a uh, sine of 30 degrees divided by the side that's opposite it. Now you could set it up the other way, 10 over sine B, 15 over sine 30. It just gives you a little more algebra work later on. So I want to find sine B. So let me multiply both sides by 10 to get that all alone. Sine of B is 10 times sine of 30 degrees over 15. So 10 times sine of 30 degrees divided by 15. Let me figure out what that is as a number right now. 10 times sine of 30 divided by 15. A third. Looks like 0 0.3 repeating, which is one third. All right. Well, let's see what that does for us then. If I now, I know that sine B is that. Now, if I want to know B, notice I'm given the ratio and I want to find the angle. I'm going to have to use inverse sine. So B would be the inverse sine of that value. So let me do that on my calculator then. So inverse sine, and here I'll just say what the last answer on the calculator gave me. Looks like about 19.47 degrees. Cool. And then if I wanted to solve the rest of the triangle, of course, these have to add to 180, and I could do loss signs again. And it looks like I have the shorter side opposite the smaller angle. All right, it looks pretty good. So sometimes I won't know the angle, but I can use inverse sine or arc sine to, to help me get there. Now, here is the thing about that. Remember, inverse sine only gives me values from here. So sometimes it gives me values in here, sometimes it gives me these negative values. But it never spits out obtuse angles, right? It only goes from negative 90 to 90. It won't give me anything bigger than 90 degrees. So if I'm using arc sine, my answer sometimes will give me something that uh, works, but there might I might have missed an opportunity or another possibility. I'm going to talk about that right after this example. So here's our next example. And again, I'm not trying to draw it to scale. Let's say that's 20, that's 30, that's 2. And I'll just work to find this angle right here. Sine of that angle divided by the length that's opposite it is equal to sine of this angle divided by the length that's opposite it. So if I wanted to know this, multiply both sides by 20. 
So sine of b would be 20 times sine of 30 degrees divided by 2. Let me do that on my calculator, see what I get. Close off the parentheses. I get 5. So sine of some angle would be 5. All right, so at this point, that might make you uncomfortable because I'm gonna I'm saying that sine of some angle spit out a value of five. Or in other words, if if I'm supposed to go inverse sine of five. And if it doesn't make that uncomfortable, or if you don't notice it, that's okay, because if you try this on your calculator, you're gonna give you a domain error. So remember, um, sine will only spit out values between zero and one. Arc sine only takes in values uh, between, uh, I'm sorry, negative one and one. So this has no solution. So that means that this thing that I drew is impossible. It can never be a triangle. And if you think about it, if that's 30 degrees and that's 20 long, this is only too long. If I tried to draw it to scale, that thing just would kind of swing here uh, in the wind, so to speak, and not match up. I, I drew, a, I made a scale version of it right here. So notice this is actually 20 degrees. This is 20 long. And this distance is too long. Notice that, like that can't get back down here and touch this and touch this. This this can't close up to be a triangle. Like I can swing it around. I could swing it around and still keep this distance of two, but it'll never make a triangle. You know, if you think about it as a radius of a circle, and that's fixed like that, this won't, this won't close up. So even though I drew it and uh, put these numbers on it. What I drew was nonsense. This is there's no such triangle. And notice this happens in this case where I have an angle and then uh, two sides where the angle's not between them. This is some called sometimes called the SSA side side angles case. It's also called the ASS case angle side side. Um, and this is the one that's going to give you trouble with law of signs. So that kind of helps remember that that one's going to give you trouble. So sometimes when I have um, a side side angle or an angle side side, I get no solution. But notice here in this one where I had 30 degrees and then this side side angle or angle side side, I did. I got one solution. So sometimes in this in this case, you can get no solutions and sometimes you can get one solution. And there's actually one other case uh, that I want to that I want to talk about for that as well. So what I want to do now is uh, kind of create a problem and then tear it, tear it apart. And my whole point is how poorly sine helps with obtuse angles. So I'm going to have some triangle. I know that this is 10, this is 27 degrees, this is 115. And I'll just figure out what that could be. Um, and this would just be me kind of making up a triangle. So I know that I'll, I'll just call it A. I know that A over sine of 115 would be 10 over sine of 27 degrees. So multiply by that sine 115, A would be 10 uh, times sine 115 degrees over sine of 27 degrees. Get out of there, domain errors. 10 sine of 115, close them off, divided by sine of 27, about 19.96. So in that situation, this side length would be about 19.96 long. And I can go on and solve the rest of the triangle, figure this out, 180 minus those, do law signs again. Now notice I didn't try and draw this to scale. 115 degrees looks nothing like this, right? It's, it's more like this. So now here's what I, I want to do. I want to just forget about the 115 degrees for a second and just, but keep the 10, keep the 19.96 and keep the 27 degrees. And now let me, I'll call this A, let me undo this and using law of signs and try and figure out what angle A is. So according to this, you know, where I built it from, that was 115 degrees. So notice here I had an angle-angle side. Angle-angle side 
that's there's going to be one triangle, only one possibility that works here. But now, as I'm undoing this, now I have, notice, an angle side side. I have this problem, this type of problem that I said was the problematic one. It's, it's called the ambiguous triangle. Um, because, like we've seen, sometimes we get zero solutions, sometimes we get one solution. But let me see what happens here. So I know that uh, sine A divided by the side that's opposite it would be equal to sine of 27 divided by the sine that's opposite it. So multiply both sides by that 19.69. Grab my calculator. Um, 19.69 times sine of 27. Close off those parentheses, divide by 10. About 0.89, it's not bigger than one, so I will get an answer for it, about 0 0.9, 0 0.894. So I know the ratio, I wanna know the angle, so I'm gonna use arc sine. And on my calculator, I already have that, so I can just go arc sine of the answer. Then I don't have to type it back in, I don't have to round. And I don't get 115 back, I get about 63. Um, 0.36 degrees. I get about, about 64 degrees or something like that. That's crazy. I'm going to get this even more exact. So I'm going to go back this 19.96. I'm going to use that whole number and do it and just so I don't have any rounding at all. So there's that length. Then I went it times sine of 27 degrees divided by 10. I got that value. I got close to it. I was a little lower, right? Because I had some rounding error. And then I went arc sine of that, 65. So, you know, the rounding's okay. You're going to have rounding on a test. That's no big deal. Um, but according to this, this is 65 degrees, not 115. <laughs> I drew some pictures that might help us think about this. So here's our original our original triangle. This 27 degrees is here, 115, 19.6, and 10 opposite it. But notice if I keep that 27 degrees, and I keep the 1996 and the 10, there's another triangle too with this 65 degree angle that also meets these conditions, 27, that, and that, 27, that, and that. Notice in this case, this side angle angle, that's fixed, but it have, I have two possible triangles that could work here. Here's what's going on. So I have these. I'm going to take this original triangle and I'm going to throw it on top of that, that triangle. So we can see that we still have that 1996, the 27 degrees and all that. So notice how I put them on top of each other. This 10, this distance of 10 here, notice in this case with the 115, it works. But if I keep that 27 degree angle fixed, I get this line right here. This can swing over like it's a radius and it could keep, maintain that 27 degree angle and make another triangle too. And here's, here's, the, here's the, the really great part. This is 10 and this is 10. So this is a isosceles triangle. So if that's 65 degrees, this also must be 65 degrees. And notice that together these make 180. 115 plus 65 is 180. That's the way we can check to see if we have a second triangle. And again, this is this is only going to come out of a uh, ASS situation. So 115 and 65, they add to 180. It has to do with arc sine. Look, if we if we do this 65 degrees, that gives us a certain height. That height 
can happen from another angle that has the same height, which is 180 minus 65. That's our 115. So we can also have two solutions if our original triangle that we were given was side side angle or angle side side. So let's go ahead and solve, solve this triangle. And notice this is a side side angle or an angle side side case. So we should be ready for any of these potentialities. We could have zero solutions, one solution, or two solutions. So straight up, let's just use law of sines to figure out angle A because as I'm looking at this, I have an angle and a side opposite it. I don't know this angle, but I know the side opposite. That's law of sine setup. So sine of A over five is gonna be sine of 35 over three, multiply both sides by five. Sine of A should be five, sine of 35 divided by three. So five sine of 35, close it off, divide by three, it's about 0.956, so yeah, that's uh, that'll be a possible answer, 0.956. Notice that's the ratio, sine of A is that. So if I wanna know A, I'm gonna go arc sine of that ratio to give me my angle. And since it's already my calculator, I'm not gonna to have to round it all, I can just go give me the arc sine of the answer. About 72.93 degrees. So, so far I know if that's 35, that's 5, that's 3, this would be 72.93 about. Um, if I want to solve the rest of the triangle, you know, I can go 180 minus those, do loss signs again to get that. Now, I need to check, so I know I have at least one solution, because it worked. <laughs> now, let me check if it, if there's a second solution that would work. And so notice Right now I have something that looks like this, where this is five, this is three, and these this is a fixed 35 degree angle. I found the 72 degree angle. Now, if there is another possible triangle, this three length would swing to here. So that would be my 72.93 right there. So again, this three length would swing to here, and that would give me this triangle right here, where that's five, that's three, and then that would be some other angle, and it's gonna be an obtuse angle, because remember, uh, arc sine can only give me acute angle values. So the way that I figure what it was going to be is, uh, if it exists, it's 180 minus that, minus 72.93. So 180, I'm gonna be lazy and go 180, minus um, 72.93, 107.07. So I could have a triangle where this is 35, this is 107.07, .07. that's still five, that's still three. And the way that I check if, if it works or not is could this actually be a triangle? In other words, if I go 107 plus 35, that's going to give me 142.07. Now notice that that leaves me enough to add up to 180 to give me that triangle, to give me that angle. So yeah, I actually have two cases here. So if I was solving this triangle, I would need to solve this triangle out and this triangle out all the way. You know, 180 minus that is going to give me that angle. Law of sines again to give me that side. Now, again, if I have an angle side side situation, I need to check if there's zero, one, or two solutions. Every single time. So let's solve a couple of triangles. So I'm told that uh, A, angle, angle, remember, capital case is, is angle, um, and lower is side. So A is 42 degrees, side A is 70 and side B is 112. So let me sketch my triangle, A, B, C, 42 degrees, angle A is opposite uh, side A, side B is an opposite angle B, and there's side C. So first off, I think that what we'll do is we'll figure out angle B, because it's opposite, we have 
an angle opposite a side, an unknown angle opposite a side. So sine B over 112 would be sine 42 over 70. So multiply by 112, that's not degrees. Multiply by 112, sine B is 112 sine 42 degrees over 70. So I can arc sine it uh, and get my answer. So B is going to be whatever the arc sine of this is. So let's see, that's 112 sine 42 over 70. 112 um, sine of 42 degrees. Close off those parentheses, divide by 70. So there's my ratio. And now notice that's a 1.07. If I try to go arc sine of that, I'm going to get an error. So that tells me right away there's no solution to that triangle. Because it would be arc sine of something bigger than 1, which is ridiculous. So for this next one, uh, let's sketch our triangle ABC. It tells us angle B is 13 degrees. Side A is 5 and side B is 10. So if we're going to solve this triangle we need to find we would need to find all the angles in all the side lengths and let's just do kind of the primary. I notice I have an angle and the side across from it and I don't know this angle but I know the side across from it. So I would set this up, set this up saying sine A divided by 5 is sine 13 divided by 10. Multiply by 5, that means that sine A is 5 times sine of 13 degrees. <laughs> that 13 looks like a B. 13 degrees over 10. So 5 sine 13 over 10. Do my calculator. 5 sine 13, close it off, divided by 10. I get about 0.11. Two, four. Sine A would be that value, whatever that was. So I would go arc sine of it to get angle A. So inverse sine of it, about 6.45. So that would mean that angle A is about. 6.45 degrees and so that would be here if there is a possible second triangle this would be 13 you know this 10 would swing like this and what would be here would be 180 minus that so 180 minus 6.45 uh let's see what's that is that's about 172.55 no, 173, sorry. Um, now let me think if that's a possible triangle. I have 173 degrees. I already have the 13 degrees. So if I go 173 plus 13, notice that's greater than 180. That's 186 degrees. So I don't have enough to make a third angle. So this only has one angle in it. And that's how I can tell after I get that angle, subtract 180 for it and see if I can get another triangle from it. All right, last one, A, B, and C, A is 43.1 degrees, side A is 186.2, side B is 248.6. Now I know an angle on the side opposite, here's an angle on the side opposite. Notice this is ASS too, so I'm going to have to be careful, it could be zero, one, or two solutions, kind of probably predicting where it's go, we already have the zero, we already have the one solution. So, um, probably going to be two. Uh, but anyways, let me set it up. Sine B over 248.6 is sine 43.1 over 186.2. Multiply by that 248.6. So sine of angle B, 248.6 times sine of 43.1 degrees over 
So 248.6 times sine of 43.1 degrees. Close off those parentheses. Divide by 186.2. I get that. And now I'm going to arc sine that because remember my sine of my angle equaled that. So inverse sine of that. That's less than one, so I should get an answer. And I get about 65.82 degrees. So about 65.82 degrees. So one of my triangles, 65.82, 43.1, boop, 186.2, 248.6. I could go on and solve the rest of the triangle. These have to add to 180 so I could get that. Then I could use law signs to get that again. So now let me see, is there a second triangle where this is 43.1, 248.6, 186.2, and this is some obtuse angle. Remember the way that I get it is I'm going to go 180 minus that value that I found, 65.82, 114.18. Notice if I add 43 to that, that's going to be less than 180. So yes, this has two possibilities. I know these angles. Add to 180, you get that angle. Law signs again to get that other missing side. All right, uh, message me if you have questions. Post questions in the forum. Good luck with the assignment.